In this lecture, we are going to talk about softmax classifier, which is widely used in the neural nets. Suppose we get this image input, which is handwritten a single digit number, and then we want to classify each image into numbers between 0 to 9. So there are 10 categories. So in this case, because this is a classification problem, probably we can reuse existing logistic regression model which gets input and then we have a linear inactivations and then eventually we produce one output which can be used to predict either 0 or 1. However, in our problem, we actually have 10 labels. So it is more natural to have 10 outputs like that. And then each output can indicate the probability of y to be 0 or y to be 1 and so on. How are we going to implement this? How are we going to make our neural nets to produce 10 outputs rather than one single output? We want to use matrix multiplication to produce the matrix, the outputs that we want. Previously, we used 2 by 1 matrix to produce n by 1 from given x value n by 2. So the simple idea here is that because these two must be the same, they will cancel out and then eventually the output of this matrix multiplication will be n by 1 matrix. Now the question here is that if we want to produce 10 outputs, what will be our the size of our weight matrix? In this case, let's say suppose our input is 2 for as an x, x and then we want to produce n by 10 matrix then what will be the metric size for the w? So this is obvious that 2, it should be the same as 2, so it's going to be 2 times, we want to produce 10, so the output will be 10. So simply, in our last linear model, we can just use weight value, which metric size is, here let's say the input size is going to be m, then what we need is m by 10 matrix for this W, then it will, will produce 10 outputs. The next question is how are we going to make this output as probability? So for this, we're going to use a very famous function called the softmax. This is our softmax equation. So the idea of the softmax is that for given G numbers, it squashed all the numbers between 0 to 1 value and then actually the output of the softmax it will be the probability of to be that index so i'm gonna show you one example here and to understand how it works for given input x we do some linear operations and it will produce three numbers which is called scores or logits because it's linear so it can be any numbers 2.0 1.0 and 0 0.1. If you apply softmax to this real number or logits, we get very nice probability for each index. For example here, 0 0.7 is probability that y is gonna be 0 and so on. Also, because each value here are all probabilities, if you sum all of p, it's gonna be 1. Let's summarize our softmax one more time with a very nice slide from this course. So from our input, we can run some linear model, and then this linear model can produce a logit, some numbers, some values. And then we can apply our softmax here, and then we can produce a probabilities. And the next step is that we have to compute the loss for a given label. So in our case, the label is going to be given as one hot labels, which means that if y is 0, then the label will be 1, 1, 0, and 0. It's one hot format. And then in order to compute the differences, the loss, we're going to use cross entropy between this y hat, which is our computations, versus real label. Our cross entropy can be computed using this equation minus y log y hat. Cross entropy can basically compute 
the differences between two distributions of y and y hat. And then in total loss is just the sum of this entire cross entropy. Let's use very simple source code example to see how this cross entropy is working. So we are going to use very simple numpy array for this example. For the y, which is label in our case, we use the one one hot expression, so one zero zero is our y. And then for the prediction one, we also use the same value used in the example here 0 0.7, 0 0.2, and 0 0.1. In this case, our prediction is pretty good because we say that probability of y to be 0 is very high. To compare with the other prediction, we also have a prediction which is wrong prediction, which is 0 0.6 for a y is gonna be 2. The probability of y will be 2 is very high, but this one is low. So this prediction is wrong. So if you can compare the loss, we can expect that the loss value for this one is small, but this is gonna be something high. That's what we can expect. So we can just apply this cross entropy in this equation, y minus y times log with the y prediction. As you expect, the number here is uh, something small. But if you compute the cross entropy loss for the second prediction, the value is going to be something high. So how this works? We can just look at them something very intuitively because we're going to provide the y as one hot value. If we multiply this, we just can ignore, only we can focus on these two values. We can ignore this because it's multiply with this one hot. So it's going to be minus one times this log, log 0 0.7 is a small value. And then log 0 0.1 is a large value. So that's how we're gonna get this after computing this cross entropy. In PyTorch, we can simply use their implementation called cross entropy loss. And then we get this loss, and then we call this function by feeding our predicted value and the real value, we can compute our loss value. But when you're using this cross entropy loss in PyTorch, two things we need to consider. First, this y value here is not one half. This is gonna be class, which means that it's gonna be zero or one or two in our case, which is more convenient. And the second thing that is different than previous example is that our prediction value is not softmax. We can just directly feed our logit value right here. The reason is inside of this implementation, it includes softmax inside. So we don't have to apply softmax when we compute the loss value, which is also very convenient. So basically the cross entropy makes really convenient use by passing this class and then also by passing only logit. So this example basically shows that we provide zero class and then we provide this logit and then using this y value and y prediction we can compute this loss. As we can expect, first one is, is a correct prediction so our loss is something small but second, this is uh, their prediction. So our prediction is wrong so the loss is going to be something high. Another very nice thing about this PyTorch implementation is we can use batch mode, which means that we can provide multiple labels and then also we can provide multiple predictions. So for example here, the first label is 2 and then 0 and 1. Once again, Y is the class. We provide the class, not one hot. So for this, we need three different predictions. The first prediction is this. So it's correct prediction and the second one is this also correct and third one is this so which is also correct so y prediction one is a good prediction this is very good and then but y prediction two is not very good so this is their prediction which is wrong and this is also wrong and this is also wrong so when you compute the, the loss probably expect that this one is a little bit lower number 
but this one is a little bit high number. So when you compute, as we expected, we can get this uh, loss function, which works pretty well for our softmax classifier. In the PyTorch, there is another way to use softmax classifier using NLL loss. So as an exercise, we can figure out how we can use NLL loss for softmax classifier. Simple hint is that you can just use log softmax with this NLL loss, which is basically the same to using just cross entropy loss. Now, we can apply our softmax classifier to a real problem, something like this. So for a given image, 28 by 28 pixel, we can classify them as one of the 10 categories between 0 to 9 because it's handwritten one single digit number. So once again, the image of input image size is 28 by 28, so total it gets 784 pixels. So we can design our neural net which gets 708 pixels and eventually we're gonna provide 10 outputs. So usually we call the first input as an input layer and the output as output layer. In the middle, because it's hidden from either inside and outside, it's called hidden layers. In hidden layers, you can design as you want. You can make as many layers as you want, and each layer, how many nodes you want to have, it's up to you. So for example here, we can build something like four hidden layers with each node size is like this, 520, 320 to 40, 120. And in order to build this in the PyTorch, basically we can make each linear element for a given input size and output size. For example here, this hidden node is 520. So this first linear element gets 784 as an input and then produce 520. And then our second layer will get 520 and produce 320 outputs and so on. So this output will be exactly the input for the next layer. And then finally, what we need to do is that we have to produce 10 output. So this is fixed. So in summary, this input 784 and this 10 are fixed. All the middle, you can decide your arbitrary numbers. Once we have these elements, basically we can connect them in our fourth function. But input x here is that we get this vector 1 by 28 by 28. 28 by 28 with one color. So first, we're gonna do flat this vector to n to 784 using this command. And then we're gonna feed this one to our first layer and this the second layer and so on. And then in the last layer, we don't have to apply any activation function because we are going to use the logit as an input for the cross entropy function. In here, we are using cross entropy loss as a, our criterion. And then in our batch, we basically get the data, which is x and then target. And then we feed this data to our model and then we get output, which is our prediction. Using this prediction and then given target, we can just compute the loss using our cross entropy. And then we do back propagation and then we update our weights. And that's it. And this is the entire source code. First part is that we are using our data loader. We define the directory and then we load our, our data. And then this is our, our network, which has these components and then we connect them together. And the last, once again, we are not going to use any activation function. And then we define our model using this class. And then we define our criterion, which is using cross entropy. And then we're going to use the same SGD here for our optimizer. In training cycle, basically, we using this train loader, we just get data and the target for each batch size. Here, the batch size is given 64. So for uh, this data, we pass this one to model and then we predict. And then once we predict, the predict value and the given target, we compute loss and do this one. And here is basically just printing out 
what's the epoch, uh, what is the current loss, and so on. Some very nice information about the progress. And then how can I see our training, our model is good or not good? We have to measure some sort of accuracy. The best way to measure the accuracy is that we're going to divide our data set into two. One is called the training, another one is called the testing. So in the training, we only use this training data set and build our model. And then once we finish this, we use this test data set, which never seen before for this model to evaluate our model. If you see our data loader carefully, so we, we have two different data loaders. One is called the train loader, another one is called the test loader. In our training cycle, we only use the train loader to train our model. And then once we finish this training, we used this test loader to test our model. So basically we feed this model and then we can compute test loss. And then here we try to predict using this torch.max function and then see how many of them are correct by comparing with this predicted value and then this target data. And then we compute the sum and then we divide it with the total number and then we can compute the percentage how many of predictions are correct. Let's look at the max function a little bit closely. Suppose we have this prediction values and this max return two things. First, it return the maximum value which is 0 0.9 for this and then it return the index. This is 0, 1, 2. That's the index of the 2. So uh, this is going to be 2. So in here, what we want to do is that from um, this output predictions, we want to get the index so that that is the, our classification. If we want to get only index, we can use this. So this is why we use this one to get index. So the accuracy can be computed once again using how many of them are correct and then we can just print this percentage. So this is our loss. In training, it has a very nice way to print out what is current epoch and then what is our iterations and then it prints out the percentage of these iterations and then here is the loss, training loss. And then this is our test using our separate test set the average loss is a little bit high, but accuracy is pretty good, 97% using simple neural nets. If we need something multiple label prediction, no problem. We can just use cross entropy loss. So basically, the last layer is going to be just linear output, and then we can feed this one to our cross entropy loss, then everything will be okay. As an exercise, we can build a softmax classifier for this very interesting data set which is available in this URL. Of course, also you can build your own data loader for this data set. In our next lecture, we are going to cover a very important neural net which is called convolutional neural net.